Hi students, welcome back. In the previous video, we learned how to solve a system of equations using Gauss elimination method, where we had reduced our augmented matrix to the REF form, the row echelon form. Here, we will study another method, the Gauss-Jordan method for solving the system of equations. Let's see how is this method different from Gauss elimination. In Gauss-Jordan method, we'll first form the augmented matrix and then we will reduce it to reduced row echelon form using elementary row transformations. So what is this reduced row echelon form, also called the RREF form? In this, we make sure that all the values above and below the pivot in the final matrix are zero. Then all the rows with zero entries come in the end and the pivot is in the next column for each successive row. We'll take an example to explain this. Let's say we are given a system and we want to solve this. First thing we do is form the augmented matrix. Now, if we have 1 in the pivot, it is always convenient. So here, if we interchange our row 2 and row 1, then if these two rows are interchanged, we can get 1 in the pivot's position automatically. So now we interchanged and we see the pivot is 1. We will make the values below the pivot 0, 5 and 3 have to be made 0. As nothing is above this pivot, so these two operations are done. By taking the elementary row transformations R2 is R2 minus 5 R1 and R3 is R3 minus 3 R1, these two values have become 0. When we move to our second row, we see the first non-zero entry is minus 3. Now this is our pivot. We can leave this minus 3 or we can make it 1. Here let's make it 1. So we divide the second row R2 by minus 3 and we get the pivot as 1. Value above this is already 0. Value below this, the 7 has to be made 0. So we take the transformation R3 is R3 minus 7 R2 and we can see here that our pivot has value above it as 0, below it as 0. Here there is nothing above this and values below the pivot as 0. So two columns are ready. Now come to the third row. First non-zero entry is this. So we will multiply by minus 3 by 154 and make it 1. This is the matrix which we get. But the values above this pivot, these two have to be made 0. So we take the two transformations, R1 is R1 minus 5 R3 and R2 is R2 minus 16 by 3 R3 and we get the final matrix. We can see that here we get the direct solution X is this minus 89 by 154, Y is 86 by 77 and Z is 141 by 54. Let's define rank of a matrix. When we reduce our matrix A in the REF form by using Gauss elimination method or we use Gauss-Jordan method and you reduce our matrix A to RREF form, in the final matrix, the number of non-zero rows gives us the rank of a matrix A. We write it as rank A and this helps us in finding out whether a given system will have trivial solutions, unique solution or no solution at all or infinite solutions. So let's move on to solving a homogeneous system. How do we define a homogeneous system? Let's take our system to be Ax is equal to O and if our right hand side of the equations has all zero values, then such a system is known as a homogeneous system. O here represents a column vector of all zero values. 
for a homogeneous system, only two types of solution exist. One is a trivial solution, the other is infinite. When do we get trivial solution? When the rank of our matrix is equal to number of variables. And we get infinite solutions when the rank of the matrix A is less than the number of variables. Or in other words, we get trivial solution when the number of variables is equal to number of pivots or our and we get infinite solution when number of pivots is less than the number of variables. This can be explained by using an example. Here we can see this is a homogeneous system because right hand values are all zero. We'll form the augmented matrix here. It is not necessary to write the column of zeros because they play no role and it is more than enough to write only A. If we interchange our R1 and R2, automatically we get pivot 1 in the first row and then we do two transformations to make these two values 0. This will be made 0 and this 2 will be made 0. So this is what we get. Now, for solving a system, whether it is homogeneous or it's a non-homogeneous system, Gauss elimination method is the easiest. Here we'll use Gauss elimination. So if we divide the second row by minus 11, we'll get 1 in the pivots place, which we can see we got 1 here. Then we are left with one operation here to make this 19. Minus 19 as 0. We take this operation R3 is R3 plus 19 R2 and that gives us the value below the pivot as 0. Let's multiply the matrix by 11 by minus 102 and make this value as 1. So we get the pivot 1 and now we can see here in this we have the rank of this matrix. We see only the matrix A. The rank is 3 because we have 3 non-zero rows. Rank is 3 and that is equal to number of variables x, y, z. Hence, there is a trivial solution. So, all x, y, z values will be 0. In other words, because number of pivots is 3 and it is equal to number of variables. So, there are trivial solutions 0, 0, 0. Let's look at another example. We form the matrix, augmented matrix, and we'll again interchange the rows 1 and 2 and get the pivot in, pivot as 1 in the first row. Now, we will make our two values below the pivot as 0. Now, this also has to be made 0. So, we'll bring the matrix to the REF form. And while doing, the, doing that, we see that the last row is row of zeros. So, the rank of the matrix is 2 because there are two non-zero rows. And that is less than the number of variables. So, there are infinite solutions. And because in the third column, there is no pivot, this variable corresponding to this column, the variable z, is taken as a parameter k and that becomes an independent variable. On back substitution, we get the solution as 5k minus k and k. Moving on to finding the inverse of a matrix. How do we define the inverse? Let's say we are given a matrix A. Then we say that A has an inverse B. B is the inverse. If and only if A, B gives us I, or BA is equal to I, that is either from the front or from the back, we multiply A by B, we should get an identity matrix. I is of order N. Only square matrices have inverse, we have to note that. And if a matrix has an inverse, it is said to be non-singular, otherwise it's called a singular matrix. How do we find the inverse of a matrix? So, to find the inverse, we will write an augmented matrix or AI. 
we'll write the whole matrix A and along with that we'll write the identity matrix. And then our aim will be to reduce A to identity. In the process, whatever changes happen to I, that gives us the inverse. Let's look at this example here. A is given to us and we have to find its inverse. We'll first write the augmented matrix AI. Because this has to be reduced to in identity matrix, we'll make the pivot 1. So, we're dividing R1 by 2. Now, when we divide by 2, this is what we get. We could have interchanged row 1 and 3 and brought the pivot uh, here as 1. But then in the final matrix for inverse, we would have to replace R3 and R1 in the end. So, this is what we get when we get the, when we divide the first row by 2. We will now make these two values 0 because we need a pivot, uh, we need an identity here. By doing the transformations, we get this. Now here, first column is ready for the identity matrix. But this is minus 3 by 2. Let's divide this whole equation by or we can say multiply by minus 2 by 3. So we will be getting the pivot as 1. We have to remember whatever transformations we do for A, we have to do the same transformations for each row for this matrix I also. So now we have 1 as the pivot. We'll make these two values 0. This has to be made 0. And this has to be made 0. So we take the two transformations. R1 is R1 minus half of R2. And R3 is R3 minus 9 of R2. And we will get our second column ready. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now here we have a 4. We have to divide the third row by 4. So that we get the pivot as 1. We do that and now we have pivot as 1. Now these two values have to be made 0. So we will take two transformations and we get our final matrix as I. A has reduced to I and whatever transformations we did here, that gives us the inverse. So when this turns to I, this turns to A inverse we get the inverse as this matrix. This is our inverse. Thank you for watching.